T1 versus Vitality. Major implications, championship implications. Let's get down to the field and play some Rocket League. So G1 may have the opportunity here to completely upset Team Vitality. They may have one of the best performing players so far this season in Atomic. What they don't have, Turtle, is a whiteboard. Can they have their passion oh, yeah. and use it to break through this Team Vitality? The, pretty, you know, in sync <laughs> with each other. A whiteboard is, that's yeah, gotta be some method. of the most, like, serious and, like, physical proof of coaching I've ever seen. And we'll see how that comes into play here, the whiteboard power. But uh, yeah, I think this is going to be a crazy series. We just got a, a beauty of a game seven previously. And I'm just hoping we can get that same level of excitement because I haven't had my coffee today, but I don't need it. This game, the Rocket League, everything that's on, on line right now on the, the tournament mm -hmm. lives, mm -hmm. it, it's crazy. What's at stake? Alpha 54 is crazy as well. Man's hitting the flip reset early on. What more do you want, Colt? Mate, here is your, your shot of caffeine that you need to wake you up. When Alpha starts a series like this, he tends to continue in this sort of form. You know, one of those yep. uh, mechanical players that can blow hot and cold. But normally you can sense with him if he's feeling it. That to me, Turtle, suggests that he's feeling it. Yep, there's that boost of dopamine I needed. I got the flip reset. I'm feeling good for the series cast now. And my word, this is going to be a crazy one. I definitely expect a lot of defense coming out from G1. I, I do agree with Daz. I think that Vitality love to move as a unit in cohesion. They're so good at utilizing each other when they're spread across the field, going for passing plays, rarely having double commits. Then, of course, you've got Alpha 54 leading the charge with those mechanics. Yeah, he's looking good already as Alpha. You can tell he's feeling it. His finger's nice and warm around that controller. The G1, they've got plenty to offer themselves. I mentioned Atomic in that intro there, and he is one of the best performers this season overall, certainly for G1 up to now. He is the man that they will be looking to. Can he do anything early here? Went for the early shot there against a Redostin who is performing valiantly for Vitality. He has really stepped up for this team as they've, uh, you know, they've come up the power rankings in the last few weeks. Oh, 100%. Redostin has been a sight to see, first and foremost, for a lot of this team. He's been putting in the work, of course, increasing in stats across the board. But none of that is going to matter right now, Cole, because ultimately the pressure is on the line for G1. Vitality have already made it, so who's to say what type of Vitality we get? Sometimes we see an even better squad after all the pressure is gone. Sometimes they can, uh, you know, they can buckle. the mm -hmm. nerves buckle down a little bit, or unbuckle rather. And that could that could play effect here. We'll see if that bleeds into their play style. Maybe they overextend, go for a couple of double commits, but ultimately it's been a slower game as they're just riding off of that initial flip reset from Alpha. Yeah, the pace has been a little bit slow so far, as you mentioned, and I'm surprised at that from G1. You think of this team, and one thing you think of is speed and pace and aggression and taking it to your opponents. But we haven't really seen that from them so far, trying to build their way into this series. As it was mentioned on the desk, never beaten Vitality. There's no shame in that, the way Vitality are currently playing, but they're going to have to offer a little bit more than what we've seen so far. Too rarely have we seen these players have any time on the ball or any space. Not much incision so far from G1. And, you know, I, I sense that they're... Uh, feeding their way into the series, but you're gonna have to step it up at some point. Yeah, absolutely. And I don't think boost has been too much of an issue. You can see Atomic there grabbing the corner. They're playing a slower approach right now and trying to transition as best they can. Dorito gets a goal line save, and this is two players now up for the exact same spot that they just previously saved it in. Back to back touches, barely escaping with their lives intact as Alpha is looking to get something off the backboard, still setting up a couple of different shots, but on a good wave is Vitality. And as G1 do their best to stay in contention for this major, Vitality have got something to prove as well. There is the ominous figure behind them of Zen. He will almost certainly be coming into this team in spring. So even though this, these guys have made the major, as Alpha puts that away, they're still trying to prove themselves individually. So don't expect them to play it slow. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the fact that Zen is and almost certainly going to come into this roster, it means Okay, let's prove my worth while I'm still here. And that's got to be the mentality, trying to make as big of an impact as you can. And Alpha 54 have certainly, or excuse me, has certainly made an impact in game number one. Two goals to his name, and they are smooth sailing in game one. They're looking great, Vitality. Alpha, as you mentioned, a couple of goals and assist each from his two teammates as well. So this player is stepping up as Radosin prods this one down to the G1 half. And that's where this ball has spent most of its time in blue territory. Wins like that from Dorito, ever so important in order to change that. 
And Atomic comes in. Good change of pace to put the ball across the goal. It was a nice idea. Probably the best idea that G1 have had so far. But again, Vitality defended valiantly. Yeah, but the setup was there too. Dorito was looking for a bump. So the ideas are starting to come out. A flurry of shots. As Alpha 54 casually takes this out of his own half, Atomic forced to get back on the defensive side. But game one has been all vitality. We haven't seen too much of a stressful situation on defense where they're forced to even get a couple of goal line saves. The pressure just not enough from G1. Yeah, disappointing from them so far. Yet to have a single shot as Sizen rolls in a third and caps a dominating performance in game one for Vitality. Yeah, this is seven shots for Vitality up against zero from G1, which is ridiculous. Yeah. And, and what I really like about Vitality right now is as dominant as they are, Cole, they're not overextending. You'll see teams where there's so much space and they'll just throw everybody forward because they have that space. No, Vitality is very composed and knows that, okay, if we, just, if we just keep it calm, keep it collected, we're gonna get shots, get opportunities just like this without having to push everybody forward. Alpha involved again up against Atomic. Doesn't always have to be beautiful. Sometimes decision making is key. And he and Radostin have really made a partnership between themselves in this split, I would say. So it's no surprise to see the man with the best decal in the game. I'll say it, Radostin. Oh Put that one home. I, I have fully turned on the uh, on the Vitality decal. I adore yeah. it now. You know, I I understand. It's like it's like that that color combination that's just so weird that it works. Yeah. You know, it's so goofy looking that it's amazing at the exact same time. And it's so we, fun to look at. We weren't quite ready for it when it was first announced. I think they were ahead of their were. time. I they were. Time. And it, it's Radosta that's leading that charge improving yeah. it. Look, he's, he's <laughs> wiping Alpha out of the way. So look, mate, you don't deserve to share a pitch with me. Yeah. I'm the one who looks absolutely fabulous right now. But we're falling up. We're pretty happy if you're in the Vitality camp. The or whiteboard is well and truly are working, you? but Farah didn't account for that. Put that on that. the whiteboard. It's Put up. it on the whiteboard. This isn't a mistake. This has got to go on the whiteboard. I know yeah. Farah's wasting all his ink that's left. <laughs> and now that definitely made the whiteboard. But no, in all seriousness, it's just one goal now given to G1. Obviously, you don't want to give any momentum, but this has truly been, I'd say, a slaughter from Vitality in game one. Yeah, I can't see that goal giving G1 too much heart. You know, sometimes a goal is scored at the end of the game and you think, oh, they can take that. They've earned that. That's really yeah. going to change their feeling in the post-game uh, conversation. That one, I don't feel the same way. I feel yeah. like Vitality, you know, took their foot off the pedal, looking very comfortable, and G1 just scored a tap-in, essentially. It's Vitality completely and utterly in the ascendancy, and what a performance from them it was. I'm curious. I mean, it would be an awkward time to call a timeout early in this series. But we've, we've seen it before. We've seen it yeah. before. A uh, quick little Gen timeout, G I believe. It, yeah, we saw it with Gen G up against FaZe, that, that early initial timeout after game one. It didn't work out, because I believe FaZe Clan still went on to win mm -hmm. in OT after that. But hey, I'm all for switching it up. It might be needed. You know, if needed. you haven't got the whiteboard, then you got to make sure that you take whatever <laughs> you can on the, the G1. The whiteboard buff. Yeah, exactly. But in, in all seriousness, for G1, that's not the performance that we've expected to see yep. from them in the last few weeks. No, not at all. And I, I, it was so flat coming out on offense. And you're talking about Atomic being a crucial player. I mean, I don't want to just hone in on him, but if you're looking to not only win this series, but have a chance at San Diego, you have to have everybody who's made a difference, made an impact throughout this split come alive in this series when it matters most. And for G1, game one, that is not the start you want. We should mention as well some teams that are hoping that G1 continue this poor performance. And that'll be Quadrant, who we just saw unfortunately go out, and German Amigos because they are the ones who are looking behind their shoulders to see G1 potentially joining them for this three-way tie and maybe beyond if they go even further tomorrow. Yep. So still lots of uh, permutations evolving in front of us as we play. Yeah, what we, happens we is... The potential for a three-way tie, which is, yeah, I believe, crazy. the first time that's ever happened for an RLCS mate. And I think that most people watching this will want that. You know, the chaos, that's yeah. what you watch esports, sports, anything like this for. So, yeah, I'm not afraid to admit that I'd love a three-way tie to see what happens. Bring the chaos. But first, we're going to have to see something else out of G1. A quick response is needed. And they've been back on defense more often, but some clears like this not going to teammates. They're just trying to buy more time, Cole. But, you know, if you're just booming this ball down the other side with no intention of keeping it, you're just giving it right back in the hands of Vitality. Yeah, the touches aren't quite there right now for G1, but that demo from Mark by 8 has been quite so far as all his teammates have as well. Could be important. It's given them a bit of space to play with 
They go into it, but now Alpha comes alone solo. Dorito nips in ahead of him. Sizen's coming in, but is met by Mark by A. And seems to be taking it upon himself to run interference. Of course, he was part of the Team BDS. They'll also be hoping that G1 lose this one because it'll make their own potential journey to the Major a little bit more simple. He was part of that squad that just tore EU apart. And it was merging chaos with structure. Ooh. Right now, G1 have the structure, but just not enough chaos. But out of all three players, I think Dorito has taken uh, the, the charge the most. I mean, this guy is being aggressive, pushing himself forward as that first man, getting demos and trying to respond and receive a lot of these clears, which we needed somebody to step up. I mean, we talked about Atomic, Mark by 8, of course, we know what he's capable of, but Dorito, this guy, getting aggressive, looking to clear the lane and pave a path for G1 to get into this game. And Mark by 8 slams that one to the ceiling, wants to follow it up. To me, he's the one. So I guess between him and Dorito, being a little bit loud as their star man's have time quiet this series, but Atomic does nip in there. It's a bit of a spider and then Demo. takes out Redosin as well. We have definitely seen a few more demos coming out for G1. And it's starting to rattle Vitality a bit. I'd say the territory game has got a lot more in G1's favor, but Vitality can counter in a second. And that's well closed down by the G1 defense. Yeah, with these demos and the aggression now that's come out from G1, I don't think Vitality are able to string together as many passes on the transition. I mean, you're forced to get Alpha. That's a solo play to nobody. Previously, he'd have more space. The aggression wouldn't be there, so he'd be able to keep it to himself, have control. But now, oh. we're seeing more from G1 off the backboard several times, looking to set up anything for G1. The blue squad is getting aggressive, but of course, you still have to worry about Team Vitality's counterattacks. Yeah, they were looking a little bit flat, Vitality and goal, and Dorito's going to try and make them pay. He puts that one into the center. Play it back, flips up against Tyson. How's the 50-50 game? It's decent. Atomic's there. They get around this ball for a flip reset. I'll just get a big old challenge. It's not quite enough. Eventually, That's it. it is snuck in by Dorito. Bottom corner, 1-0 G1. Snuck in Dorito. He saw the opportunity, the awkward play, so he pushed up right when he needed to. The timing, it's immaculate. It's tasteful and he snipes the bottom right corner. That's how you get it done. And we were waiting for that G1 look to be so dominant the past few minutes, getting demos, applying pressure, and Vitality, they were getting more and more stressed out. If you're not playing at your best, what you need to get you going is a goal, a proper goal that gives you the lead. G1 now have that. And oh, another one. To loosen up a little bit, and that's exactly what happened. I think this is off of the back end of Atomic, who not only came through with this dribble around two players, but got the bump on the final Sizen. He would have easily found a clear, but Atomic sniped him mid-air, didn't delete him, but just punched him out the way. He's come alive, Atomic, and so too of G1, doubling up their lead in quick succession. But to make sure they don't make any mistakes, and they'll be it's a lot more comfortable in the end of this one? game. This could oh be a third. Goodness. Alpha just waits. He's going to get bumped out the way. You know, Mark by 8 rotates out instead. And Dorito turns it down, but it's back to the wall stuff of Vitality hanging on in game two. Hello, G1. Welcome to the series. This is a completely different roster. Game one, of course, looked to be just a warm up. We have not witnessed many chances uh, that have been as high quality as game one for Vitality. They haven't even been able to string together passes. I mean, look at that clear. Rodosin was wide open, had some Ooh. space, but the pass didn't come out, and they're not connecting with each other when typically they move as a unit, Cole. Lovely touch from Dorito. He tried to do a little bit too much for my liking in his own corner. Somehow ended up with the ball and had was almost a key touch down the other side. So kept his composure and things were scary. Has to do it again, or at least Atomic does. Follows through. Is anyone helping him out? Not for now. So Sizen can find Alpha. Redosin's up. Vitality looked like they've sped up the pace in the last 30 seconds or so. Still backing themselves to get something out of this game. One in which they've been the poor team. And they can really punish you. But when Alpha's missing like that, you start to yeah. believe, I feel, if you're G1. Mechanics slightly off. G1, understand that. They're getting more demos. Physicality has been a huge factor. Whether or not it's going to be a demo, just getting involved and getting in front of some of these players and throwing them off their rotations, even if it's by a few milliseconds, can be a huge impact and be a benefit to you and your team as you move forward. Marked by eight, doesn't find the speed against Alpha, but it's hit right down into the hands of Dorito. Easy transitions. Easy plays here from G1 as they look to stay alive in the defensive side, but maybe some signs of life in the final 10 right. seconds out of Vitality. But even then, <laughs> with all that pressure, the saves still come up. I love this from G1. I mean, I think it's fair to say that even despite that win, they're not at their most energetic and thrilling. Yeah. You know, they're, they've played a lot faster, a lot better, but they've found a way to grind out a victory against Team Vitality. Credit to them and credit to their mentality.
I still think it comes down to the vision for Team Vitality. While they had to deal with more pressure, more demos, there were still chances to pass and to find each other downfield, but maybe they weren't used to it yet. Game one, it was there was so much space to breathe, and in game two, all of that space was cut out, so they didn't necessarily know how to recover, and they were panicking. But now into game three, even if that same level of aggression is seen out of G1, I think Vitality will handle it much better. Yeah, it's an intriguing place in this series so far. You love it when a best of seven starts out like this. You can feel like, you know, the first few jabs at each other and you can sense a flow and a shape of the series. And we definitely have that there. G1 stepping up their game. Vitality definitely had, though, have more in the tank as we head to DFH. Um, for Vitality, do you want to see them focus on solo plays here or just try um, to stick to the initial plan? I still think it's just a passing. I mean, I've seen so many opportunities where they're still positioning somebody downfield to receive a clear, but the initial clear is so panicked and so stress-induced that they're just booming it down the other side. I think they need to have better vision, see each other clearly, and not necessarily go for more solo plays, Maybe Alpha 54 can get involved because that's what worked out in game one, that solo play impact he had. But overall, it just comes down to the vision for me in that passing game. Like this right here, that clears just straight to nobody. Could have dribbled, they could have tried to set somebody else up. It's very panicked out of Vitality. Yeah, and it lets G1 come forward. But and maybe it, it what? works this what? time until Size and Fancy's a oh, tough hour, no. man. Completely backfires. He saved his own teammate's shot. That was heading straight in. Oh, you have man. to step up. And Radostin is using a lovely little car. Look at that decal. Okay, he does have maybe. Some interesting choices. <laughs> uh, inter interesting choices. All right. Interesting decisions as well on the field to <laughs> save your own shot. But I guess I won't question it too much. But I'm sure they want to take another look at that one. Or I actually won't want to. It's a bit embarrassing. We can just ignore it. <laughs> Well, Dorito's going to put that one into the corner. Everyone settle down for a second. Let the series return to something approaching normality. Atomic is almost bitten out of the way there by Radosin and Slyzen is up quick. He is the player now that all eyes turn to. You have yep. made a mistake. That's objective. As this uh, shot is saved by Radosin. You have to step up and you have to be able to deal with that, you know, to stand tall and keep your mechanics alive. And it could have come down to the comms, the communication. I mean, whoever took that shot uh, might not have stated that it was open or to leave it. Mark Baye does get a demo. Okay, let's see what's happening. Dorito off the backboard oh. and then the shot coming through. Well planned, well paced, and well executed. You don't always have to smack it in. Sometimes it's the weaker shots that are harder to save. Alpha predicted an absolute boomer in the near corner. But Mark Baye sort of called it a little bit awkwardly and put it into the bottom corner. And I just want to say, Turtle, as well, I can tell you're an ex-pro because you're saying, oh yeah, it's not definitely Slyzen's fault. Probably the comms. Yeah, the comms were bad. That's probably what happened. <laughs> I mean, most of the time, that, that's what happens. You can you can see a player off the backboard coming in to save an open net, and you're thinking, oh, you didn't know that was open? Nine times out of 10, you just instinctively assume there's going to be a goalkeeper in that wide open gap. So it really does come down to communication and telling your teammate, okay, it's wide open. And with how fast comms are with these comm videos, I don't know if you've listened to any of these communication <laughs> uh, videos of these teams, they are communicating at a rapid pace. It has evolved immensely. So communication has been more of an impact more, and more of a factor in the team getting a win than ever. Very true and very fair. So Vitality seem to have shaken themselves out of any tilt after going behind there to G1. And they should have scored themselves, but Radosin Another one. The oh! on the Atomic comes in, can't steer it home. I think he had the angle there. I think yep. he could have put that one away. Absolutely had the angle. And the, the person who had the follow-up, the player who had the follow-up, as, as soon as I say that, Alpha 54, he's got a follow-up off the backboard, but Another missed opportunity, but that one was on the side of G1. And then Vitality could have gotten a double tap from Alpha 54. Missed opportunity there. Couple of shots going far and wide. Cole, we're not seeing the best mechanics right now on the screen. No, it's a little bit sloppy, but chances are coming at a rapid pace. So you have to keep your attention up if you are on this pitch. As Alpha sends it high, those may maybe lacking boost unless it goes to the wall. Line marked by eight to come in. That double demo is going to open things right up. If the dunk's decent here from Alpha on Dorito, and Sizem could be in. He tries to get the psycho, but instead, it's got sort of a semi flip reset. Doesn't come to anything. And we had about four chances in about 40 seconds earlier. Ooh. Been a bit more of a midfield battle since then. I love that rotation, though, from Dorito. As he's falling back, as he's rotating to net, he isn't just prioritizing going to the net. He's looking to make an impact on the challenge, see if he can oh. get an interception. And that pinch looked lovely from Alpha 54, but nobody on the receiving end. A valiant effort there from Alpha, but no one was there, as you mentioned. It was close, though. Well, you got to keep an eye on this guy, even if you think he's in, you know, too much space to do anything with. You can say the same about Atomic. A couple of touches around the corner. Dorito plants, sees that one, but knows that Radosin's coming in. Radosin is not exactly subtle, but the Fennec that he's using, <laughs> easy to spot on the pitch. <laughs> and Dorito wins that race. 
honesty is a clear step up from Vitality. I still don't think I'm, I'm witnessing enough passing. I mean, that's another solo play from Sizen. They just go in with one, maybe two basic touches forward, hoping that a player from G1 will dive early. It hasn't worked out yet. At this point, it just feels like they're waiting to capitalize on a mistake rather than generating an opportunity for Yeah, and this is now then a real opportunity for G1 to step forward yet again. They've done the grinding phase of the series. You're in it now, you know, you should be warm. You should be playing well. Yeah. You've got the lead in game three. The last thing you want to do is not put your foot on the throttle and regret it. If you look back at the series and think, why didn't we attack then? So I do want to see a little bit more from G1, even though they have the lead, because Alpha's getting way too many chances like this one. He won't keep missing. That Ooh. one's on target, marked by it, and Atomic getting each other's way. Size and unfortunately for Vitality, has to rotate back. It's a good punt forward, though. Alpha's going to beat the read. Oh, that one's going in again, but Atomic gets the read. G1 surviving with 20 seconds left. And as much as I've been critiquing the offense of Team Vitality, they're still holding pressure strong and keeping the ball at least in the half of G1. It hasn't been as threatening as it could be, but that doesn't mean that a mistake won't happen out of G1. Five seconds left. Demo from Mark by eight. Sizen's left alone with the ball, looking to get a dribble. He's under one. Oh. He's past two, but Redosin, not in position to recover, not in position oh. to receive it. But what a lovely touch. And it's back down the other end. This ball's staying up. Quality there from Alpha. That was a scary moment for him. Had to get the dunk perfect. But you could say the same to G1, Turtle. That is not a happy situation go. to be in at zero seconds when they're dunking you and keeping it up. They kept their composure well. They slammed it down and they took the lead for the first time in this series. We, we just need more out of Team Vitality. You're holding pressure and waiting for mistakes, waiting to punish, but G1's defense has been rock solid. Rotations not breaking down. Team Vitality aren't necessarily looking for too many demos either, so you're not forcing a mistake. You're simply waiting. There's got to be more uh, risky plays, in my opinion, when you get on offense. You can't just wait around and sit for G1 to make those mistakes because it's not happening. And as you seen from these replays now, it could have been better for G1. I forgot, actually, that Atomic did have that chance just to put the ball yeah. into the empty net and wasn't quite able to take it there. Uh, he'll have other chances, you know, and they'll be a lot more pleased now they've taken the lead as we head into Utopia. But still not at their best. I can't get that out of my head, that G1 are by no means playing no, the yeah. and brilliant, you know, best way of playing. I mean, even with Atomic missing that open net on the tight angle, granted, it was a difficult shot. It wasn't, you know, a free, wide open, directly on the center of the net shot, but still one that you've got to put away with what's on the line. So there's room for improvement for both squads as we head into game four. Do Vitality make any adjustments? Well, I mean, they haven't scored for the last 10 minutes now in game time, having scored four in game one. So you start to wonder if they do need to mix things up. I was sensing in the last game as well that they were focusing a little bit too much on Alpha. Give him the yeah. ball, let it happen, let him do some mechanics, which worked for them in the first of these events, you know, in the uh, Is Winter it work Open. here too? Oh, it worked. It worked here I mean, again. come on. What? Let it happen. <laughs> let it happen indeed. Alpha 54, he was sleeping in the last game, but then he wakes up quickly oh. in this one. Flip reset behind the ball, forces a 50-50. Dorito's already up in the air, and you can squeeze it under him. A robust flip reset there from Alpha with the dunk at the end to finish it off as well. Vitality finally break their mini deadlock that they seem to be stuck to. And Isn't G1... it just crazy how effective the flip reset can be? I mean, it, you're yeah. thinking about how, if he just took a shot on net, he's not even able to get a 50-50. You get a flip reset, you can change the direction of the ball and still stay behind it, Cole. Yeah, it's, it's crazy how much you can just force the angle of the play with these few tools that these cars have. You know, ultimately you've got what? Up, down, left and right. And they do so much with yeah. those few movements that they have especially players like Alpha. Wonderful to watch. But Ocean's not bad either. Now sporting another Fennec. How many of these designs does he have in that garage of his? I'm sure we'll find out as the season continues. Does he, does he keep changing his car? He does. I think so, yeah. <laughs> oh, he's oh. lost his car now. Maybe on an area is in front of Mark by eight, and he's got the save as well. It was Alpha that was destroyed. And Redosin, Fennec number 17, but pretty strong to me. Mark by eight, he was the one behind the dribble. He was looking to bait out somebody, trying to set the trap and being patient behind it, but didn't have the speed to get a good shot on target. A good look from G1, who are now trailing for the first time in, what, you said 10 minutes since Vitality were able to get a goal at Atomic by himself, ties it up. That's the man that we want to see coming into this series. Atomic takes a touch here. He has Alpha in his sights, and he knows exactly what to do. It was Alpha that scored a similar goal to open up this one on Utopia earlier on, so I think it'll be extra satisfying yep. there for Atomic. Now, I did say it was by himself, but there was also a mark by eight trying to hunt down that goal line uh, goalkeeper. 
but I don't think he got a piece. Regardless, that pressure is still going to help a little bit and force him to jump early. Nice effort from G1 to get back in, and we're all tied up. Oh, alpha has got a flip reset. He's got a dribble as well. Atomic just about gets there at the end. Heroic stuff there from the Spaniard. Mark by eight. Who does he have in front of him? It's Dorito. Follow it up, and it's going to be red by Alpha. Dorito's turn now. Mark by eight in front of him. Sizen nips in there quickly. That's what you want to see from Sizen. Not letting G1 have any time on the ball. Closing them down as fast as possible. Dorito's going to leave this one for Alpha. Now Dorito's going up. He has Atomic in the center. If he can force that ball towards him. Oh, Atomic. Uh, sort of got attached to the play there. The Marbe is coming in. Still might be Double able to make in. something from it. Dorito following up in the corner. Close the ball down, but Alpha won't fall for that one. And you can still sense the reliance that Team Vitality have on Alpha 54, or even just those solo plays in general. Moving outside of their own half. They're keeping it within one player, not looking to pass it between each other. Now they're forced to play so much defense. Alpha, another solo play opportunity but it sets up nobody, and back down the other side we go. It's a little bit stuck in their ways right now, Vitality. You have to break through, change things up. Mark by 8 is breaking through them. The challenge game is definitely being won by G1, other than that moment of uh, joy that Alpha got right at the start. Spizen wins one there again. Ooh. It's time for Vitality. Radosin's almost bumped out the way. Thankfully for him, he jumps up quick. Now, who does he have in the center? Just by himself now. He pops it high, Mark by 8 closes it. It's actually Atomic who closed it. Oh, there we go. Down There's a the pass. and lovely pass. Not quite quick enough from Sizen. But that's what we need more of that. I mean, stringing together a couple of passes didn't work out there, but it definitely looked the best, I'd say, we've seen from Vitality in this game alone, even with the solo play. That pass, utilizing each other. It's necessary up against G1. As Dorito attempting to get this ball into the midfield, sniffed out early by Team Vitality. And this is a situation where it Alpha could have hit the angle, it would have been a goal, it would have been an open net, but just too difficult to hit. A horrible situation to be in for the G1 defense, but they managed to deal with it, at least for now. Redosin's coming in to try and double down the heartache for them. Alpha into Good the pass. center size, and he's go. actually going to get a free touch thanks to the demo. Dorito was coming in, had to just send that one as high as he could. Buy some time, try and make it so Redosin can't do too much against Ooh. him, but he still manages it. Alpha squeezes in, Vitality take the lead. And now we get a solo play from Redosin. He had, I believe, oh. 40 boosts starting this play off. Got the flip reset off the backboard, then sets up Alpha 54. What an impact Verdosin just made on that play. 57 seconds left, me take the lead. He's done it so many times, this split turtle. The man who is probably the most improved player this split is Verdosin, but he still has some defending to do now. Marpe is coming in up against Verdosin. All he can do this time is just send that ball away. Marpe is waiting for it. There's a boost grab there from Alpha, who's all over the pitch. Quite able to do anything this time. And the transition is good from G1. Atomic's coming in, but Ooh. what a touch that is from Sizen. Dorito there this time up in the air. Is anyone there following it? Just Atomic. Probably won't be able to get enough power and doesn't. And Alpha can just stay behind the ball. G1, they've got to get this equalizer. Oh, that's it. And now they do, and it's marked by eight. Double commit from Vitality. Two players up for this one. Alpha 54 and Sizen both go for it. Radosin creeps out of the net, hoping he can intercept or at least go for a challenge early on. Barely any boost to his name. Can't rotate back in time, and we're all tied up. Suddenly, the pressure for G1 must just feel like it's squeezing upon them. They have to win this one to give them a chance of making the major. Yeah. And they're able to do so. Mark by eight wow. tries to dribble it over Alpha. Alpha closes it quick. Atomic is there. His pace has just gone up 10 notches in the last game or so. And oh shows great composure, letting it go. Mark by eight's in almost for another. Atomic up against Alpha wins it. Can he get the other touch? Not this time. Radosin sends it away. Vitality would love overtime right now if it was offered to them. Maybe it won't be. Atomic shoots this wide. Marpe is coming in. He's kept it high. Dorito's waiting. Oh, Dorito's oh. getting it. G1 take the game and put themselves 3-1 up in the series. Check this shot out from Dorito. Not only do you get the heroics for all of them to keep it up, but Dorito, he knew that it was going to be a 50-50. He hit the brakes slightly before going for that shot so he could get the proper angle. Squeeze it past the defender, win the 50-50, and keep the ball in the air all at the same time. G1, steal it from Vitality. And Vitality have counted by taking a time out wow. after that one, and after a zero second loss. You can't blame them. That's brilliant slow no, from you, G1. That, I, I can't get over that. That is ridiculous. 
from Dorito. I mean, I was going to talk about Dorito in general, making an impact here with the demos, being the front man most of the time. But there, he was the third man. He had to take the shot. He had to hit it. He had to win the 50-52. If he just rushed into that shot, Cole, it would have been over for him. He couldn't have had a chance at even getting an angle on the net. So the fact that he knew how to win that play, how to approach it, it's just, that's, that's the reason why they pay him the big bucks. And a yeah. timeout, of course, for Vitality, you have to try and extinguish him after a buzzer beater. Yeah, I mean, you're looking at a team now, if you're Vitality, that under the backdrop of trying to make this major, the desperation they have, you know, they'll be getting itchy. They'll be want to want to hit the ball as fast as possible. One, there was a beautiful lead, I think by Dorito, actually, on the wall that even led to this chance that they had. Yeah. Then the zero second goal, where again, you want to rush at it, you want to swipe at it. They rejected that temptation and got themselves that zero second goal. So Vitality, surely, surely, and yeah. now a little bit spooked by G1. I mean, even whenever you're comparing the the mentality uh, of G1 up against Quadrant, who uh, you know had similar implications on the line of winning the series for San Diego, I think the composure is much more prominent for G1. And we'll take another look at this play off the backboard. You see him hit the brakes right there, Cole. You see mm -hmm. Dorito moving forward. He stops boosting so he can get a better 50-50 that will at least give him an angle towards the net. That play is ridiculous from them. Here's a stat for you, Turtle. Teams calling a timeout when down 1-3 in the series are 1-55, oh which is my. a 1.79% oh win rate in the series. And uh, just in case everyone's forgotten, the lone win came in SSA Winter Regional 2 this season. So, so it's in never South happened Africa. in Europe. It's, it's never or happened America, in Europe. Or North America, or Sam, or OCE, or Mina. Wow. One in or fifty-five. <laughs> One in fifty-five. And in the last series, we knew how how effective timeouts were. But yeah. I guess when you get this late in the series, all of the stats, all of the effectiveness of the timeout gets thrown out the window. Yeah. Well, statistics sort of go into the black hole of pressure in situations like this one. G1 are gonna right now have Quadrant and German Amigos, also BDS. Praying for their downfall. Praying oh, man. that Vitality can break through the statistical disadvantage they have, but not when they go behind in nine seconds. You're trying to break through the one in 55 curse, but it bounces off the corner and the net is left wide open. It's all against you. The statistics, the odds, even the gameplay right now, what we're seeing out of G1, it's on another level. And Vitality, the only, the only positive right now, I guess, is they have 445 to figure things out. And they have to hope that their team, sorry, their opponents, should I say, start to doubt themselves, start to get in their own heads. You know, winners yep. tilt. They believe that they should do this. But I'm not getting the sense now from G1, having started the series so slowly, that they are even thinking about that. And what a story from G1 as well. You look at players, you know, like Dorito and Atomic, they've, they've come up in a regular uh, way, pretty much. But Mark by eight, dropped by Team BDS in their prime, had to watch them win the World Championships. And now, to an extent, it's looking like he's going to hold their fate in his hands after beating them yesterday. One of the great sort of co career comebacks that I think yeah. Rocket League has had. I mean, we saw him, you know, get taken off of the BDS for roster. We're wondering what's going to happen. And we're witnessing the comeback, the rise back to the throne for Mark by eight. And it's all because of his teammates right here. It's Atomic and Dorito making work downfield. Yeah, but Mark by 8 was causing chaos up top as well. Pre-flipping at the ball, missing it, getting in everyone's way. It doesn't matter how he's done it. He's cleared a path for his teammates to come forward. And that's what he's been doing for his whole career. Still doing it Ooh. now, but there's going to be some defending to do from G1. Vitality, I'm sure, going to come back big time. Alpha shoot! Wow! Dorito, how on earth did what? that save? Flying across the net, praying that the shot gets pulled or belted right in the middle. I mean, come on, that's got to hurt. That's got to hurt of your vitality. You had the opening, you had the opportunity created, and then you just smack it right at the defender. Oh my goodness, what do you do, Cole? How do you get out of this rut? Mate, they, they were already diving among the fans, kissing the badge, celebrating getting back in this game. And suddenly you look back and the ball's in the side, the corner of the arena, and you're thinking, how on earth has that happened? But to get back in and get back going again. That's what Vitality have done, to be fair to them. But Alpha's oh, a man. little bit too keen. Getting in Redostin's way now, Redostin who, but his number has gone back to the OG Vitality D. What was on the so, whiteboard? What was on the whiteboard, Cole? Great I mean, question. We, got, we, we gotta know now, because something is not working. Oh I my goodness! It's erased around, because even was with that. opportunities, even with shots that are that are looking to be effective, 
There's somebody who can get a save last second from G1. And as a reminder, Vitality, even though they've already made the major, will be desperate to win this one. For reason will get to it in a second. They have to do some defending first. Yeah, with the looming specter of Zen replacing one of these players, they're not going to be settling for any quarterfinals, for any semifinals, even finals. They have to win events in order to prove themselves individually and as a team. So now the pressure does swing right back to them. Redosin shoots from Redosin, gets Vitality back in it. And this is a great sign of life as we have now just passed the halfway point by three seconds. Atomic rushing back clear. He could have just kept it to himself or hit it to the corner. Instead, dishes it out to Vitality, who can take an eager and early shot to punish. Now it's, it's within one goal, and for all of that, you know, trash talking, I wouldn't call it trash talking. We were just harping on Vitality, looking <laughs> flat, very, very uh, bored. I'd say Rocket League right oh now. They're not using goodness. each other. And now Sizing comes out. This man's not bored at all. He knows how to spice things up. The slow play, the crawling dribble by oh, Sizing, just hurts. staring down the eyes of Dorito, a man who has really stepped up in the last couple of games, waiting for him to make his move, and then putting it into the bottom corner. And Vitality Turtle have indeed awoken. Within 20 seconds, I mean, oh! these guys, okay, it's over. It's over already. We're back Ow. down to the lead for G1. You come back in the game, you get two goals back to back, and it's a midfield shot over Sizen, who looked like he could have gotten the save, just a yeah. slower rotation to the left side. Yeah, I think he turned his car the wrong way. If he'd have turned it to the right and to the left, just reverse. Just anything. Hit the reverse carry. Yeah, the in and out save would have worked. Unfortunately for Sizen, who's the one thing that he shouldn't have done. Now, yet again, he has to step up and make up for it. He misses that one. It turned into a good fake. Alpha puts it forward. Redosin's trying to take out Atomic en route. Vitality are still playing fast. They're fed up. They've shaken off this stupor that they seem to have for half the series. But G1, they're warmed up now too. Turned into a really good matchup between these two. But they won't be happy about that if they lose it, Turtle. Oh, that's such, that's such a clinical goal too. I mean, you just can see two goals back to back and you're thinking, oh my goodness, our Vitality going to come back in the series. But it will be G1 with a midfield shot. Get them back in the lead. Confidence nice got to be flowing through their veins. A good touch indeed to Radostin, but the shot was too weak. and a little bit too early. Sizen's gonna have a clean hit here, just booms it down the center, teeing up Alpha, lovely touch from Sizen. Alpha gets the read, not quite able to get the follow-up though as Redosin. He does in the end, and he follows it up, used all his boost, but might still be able to get a dunk, but not on this occasion. Now Alpha's gonna send it right what back. What a clear. It's oh. great clears, but Vitality do not need Boomable right now. They need yep. control of it, and they need Redosin to keep getting these demos and clearing space for players like Sizen. I mean, you can tell the game plan for G1 is not to get on the offensive and yeah. try to push forward. They just want to hold it down. The final minute approaching. This is match point. Vitality about to get knocked out of this regional. Knocked out of the Invitational. Marked by eight. Doesn't get the follow-up Atomic. Quick little pop-up to Dorito, who beats out Sizen, and that's going to release so much pressure along with the demo. Yeah, lovely touch as well from Dorito as well. Following it up, just stealing even more seconds. Sizen comes around. Mark by eight is going to be bypassed. Redosin to the side. This is Vitality's chance, maybe. Alpha's there. But it's gone behind him again. Ooh. He sends it forward. So desperate to get this next touch. Dorito doesn't nice. let him. Atomic touch. with the flick on. And no one there, at least until Mark by eight comes in and puts that one just wide. Alpha's turn now. Vitality's last chance potentially in this series. Who's going to make the statement? Alpha's desperate for the ball, getting in Sizen's way almost. But there's two seconds left. Seconds. It's not about Vitality anymore. It's about G1. They've stepped up so much. A poor start to the series. Look at them go now. Look at the chaos they're about to create in EU. The three-way tiebreaker is well and truly alive. G1 beat Vitality and survive. And look at the emotion, the pop-off from G1. That has got to feel good. You force a potential tiebreaker and you're still in the running for San Diego. EU just got a little bit more interesting, a little bit more spicy and vitality. They had the answer. They had the key in game one, but they were quiet for the rest of this series. Barely able to make a change, barely able to make an impact, only relying on Alpha 54, only relying on solo plays. And they were not as cohesive as we've normally seen in Europe the unit of G1, I think is how they beat Vitality there. They, yeah. they were just the better team after that first game. Yeah. I, I loved what I saw from Dorito as well, taking initiative in game two. He's the player who, in my opinion, sparked that whole movement downfield to get things started. But Europe just got broken wide open. 
a tiebreaker might be caused, might be forced, but we're going to have to wait and find out and see what happens after the break. 